Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Statistics and Theory. Uh, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to do a latent class cluster analysis using Jamovi, which is a free software package which uh, you can download from this website. Uh, the different versions of Jamovi are available for different operating systems like Windows, Mac, Linux and Chrome, so it's very versatile. I will leave this link in the comments section uh, just under this video. Before we start, I would like to recommend that you go to my channel and perhaps watch this video before watching uh, this current one, two-step clustering using SPSS. I mean, it will just provide you with some sort of introduction to what uh, clustering is. Um, in addition, I would like to suggest that you take a look at this paper which I published uh, a couple of years ago in which I use latent class analysis or latent class cluster analysis. Uh, so in, in the current analysis, I'm going to use a data set which uh, is from a project which was uh, led by Dr. Melvin Chan. This is his website, his uh, webpage. So let's get started with Jamovi. Uh, you, after you download Jamovi, you need to install Snow RMM. Um, if you have not installed it, please go to Modules, go to Jamovi Library, and under Available, uh, find Rush R, uh, Snow RMM. Uh, since I've already installed it, you, I can find it under RMM uh, under Installed. Uh, so this is Snow RMM Rush Mixture Model for Jamovi. Inside this uh, module, you can find separate types of analysis, uh, such as latent class cluster analysis or latent class analysis, Rush model, etc. And here is how it looks like. Uh, as you see, uh, right at the bottom, we have got latent class analysis. As for the data, I'm going to use uh, a data which is available in SPSS. So I'm going to click on import on this. Uh, sorry, open and this PC browse and I'm going to open fact analysis. So the the data that I'm going to use is not going to be used for factor analysis. By the way, it's just the title for uh, the data set. I've got um, around nine items. Yeah, well, exactly nine items I should say, and they are coming from a survey which was administered to a large number of people uh, which is around 1428 yes 1428 people there is some missing data I should say and uh, the Likert scale that has been used in this survey uh, ranges from 1 to 5 and basically 1 means strongly disagree and 5 means strongly agree and there's a neutral point right in between, and that's category three. Okay, so uh, I would like to start the analysis. I go to Snow RMM, latent class analysis, and this windows appears. Now, what we need to look into and take into account is that latent class cluster analysis only in, in uh, Jamovi only works with nominal data and ordinal data. So you need to make sure that your data is either ordinal or nominal. In, in this analysis, mine is ordinal. If you're not sure whether it's ordinal or nominal, please toggle back to data and click on uh, the header, double click. In this, in this section, you can determine and specify the type of uh, the variable. Up here, as you see, measure type is ordinal. You can change it to nominal or continuous. If it's continuous, uh, it should be changed into ordinal or nominal. I mean, sometimes the data is actually really continuous, so I'm afraid it cannot be uh, used for this analysis. So I'm going back to analysis and uh, latent class cluster analysis or latent class analysis. So I will move all these nine items to the variable panel there. As soon as I do this, the fit statistics for this model is estimated. And what does that mean exactly? So basically, uh, under, under this section, analysis, we can determine the number of classes 
2 is I suppose is the smallest one that could go in let's just see if we can get a one cl class model as well no it, it, we can't so the smallest one will be uh, 2 okay and uh, in addition to this two class model we can get a, a latent class analysis plot which looks like this now let's wait for it so it will be updated okay I don't know how useful you'll find this plot but w w the population share is pretty useful here this means that in class one that's in group one we have 42.1% uh, of our sample and in the second sample or in the second class uh, we have uh, 57.9 so uh, class 2 comprises a larger number of people compared with class 1 but I should also add that there is a good uh, or even distribution of the two samples in other uh, in other words uh, neither of these two samples is extremely too big so that's something good uh, that's more or less everything we can get from uh, the latent class analysis but we can also I, I highly recommend that you do this uh, save the class memberships because they're extremely useful and as you see as, as as soon as we click class memberships this appear this variable will appear here immediately I'll show you what this is so before I move to memberships I should uh, quickly uh, walk you through the model fit statistics uh, there are two important statistics here for us to look into and take into account. Um, so one of the statistics is AIC and the other one is BIC. In some literature you might also you know find uh, entropy statistics to be uh, useful um, and also uh, the chi-square value as well. So for AIC, let me go back to my own paper and read it from my paper, which stand, AIC, which stands for Akeke Information Criterion, um, it is basically a measure of relative fit or quality of the model to the data, which uh, considers model parsimony, and that's the number of parameters. AIC is estimated based on log likelihood uh, squared, that's um, you know, represented by this symbol, uh, and LLL. Um, so I think in this analysis what has been used is um, probably log, log likelihood. I'm not sh pretty sure because I wasn't able to find that sort of information on the website of Jamovi. Um, but anyway, in either case, the AIC should be lower. So you need, you need to compare a two cluster model, then a three cluster model, and so on and so forth to, to figure out which one of them uh, has a lower AIC and that will indicate that it has a better fit to the data. We also have uh, a BIC statistic in the output uh, which is used to compare the fit of different models with lower indices indicating better fit. So actually that's more or less everything we need to know about these statistics, these two. Entropy in the same way should be smaller, the smaller the better. Now. Uh, I would like to uh, right-click and copy this and then uh, perhaps uh, you know save it so I have saved the statistics into this Excel sheet I'm gonna go back to the results and uh, run a three class cluster analysis and see the results will be updated in this way I also right click and copy the fit statistics and paste it right under oh, this is pretty small maybe this way okay right under a, a this two class solution now the next step will be to compare the fit statistics especially these two across the two models uh, of course uh, what I would like to do is to, to actually add another model maybe a four class model since my data set is not too small so I think it would still be meaningful to include a uh, four class model in my analysis so right click copy and uh, let's just save it here okay so let's look at these model fit statistics these columns here um, well, uh, like I said, the, the smaller these statistics, the better. 
just by eyeballing these statistics, I can immediately see that the AIC here stands out because it's smaller. So I'm going to highlight this as um, the first piece of evidence that a four-class model is, is a better one. Next is the uh, BIC. And as you see, as we go down uh, from, from uh, in this way, from class 2 to class 3 and 4, the BIC uh, continues to decrease. And here we have the, the smallest BIC. So this indicates that a four class model is actually perhaps the has has got the best fit. And even with the entropy variable, um, you can see that the amount has decreased as well. But I'm going to just focus on these two. And and if I want to write a paper, I will probably just stick with these two statistics because that's what uh, commonly reported in uh, latent class cluster analysis. So this is step one. Step two is that I also need to take into account the population share. That's the proportion of the data or the number of people who go into different clusters. So about 39.6, roughly 40% of my sample has been associated with class one. Uh, about 80.3% uh, has been associated with class two. 50.3% uh, goes to class three and class four comprises of 26.8% uh, of the sample. Now, who are these people exactly? Well, in these uh, um, graphs or even in this part of the output, you, we cannot find that. So since we have already specified class membership here, uh, Jamovi has already outputted that class membership and it's a very useful piece of information. We go to data and under class membership, you see we have got one class membership for each person. So for person one belongs to class one, whereas person two belongs to class four and person three to class three and so on and so forth. Now, uh, can we use this information to do some sort of post hoc analysis? Of course, and I highly recommend that you do so. But since I'm going to double click on the header of this, uh, I'm afraid uh, the type of this uh, membership variable cannot be changed. I haven't been able to figure out a way to do so, so far. As you see, it's fixed. But what I need to do at this point is to create a nominal variable because these memberships are actually nominal. So um, I want to just copy all the data in this column like this and create another column beside it. Oh, no, it wasn't wasn't copied so I, I'm going to do it again. So by copying and pasting the data into a different column uh, what I'm actually doing is to create a new variable and that's a very important step. Okay so copy and paste. Yeah this makes sense. Now the variable has automatically been called K. I double click on that and change it into member and it's a nominal variable, that's what I really need. Okay, good. Uh, so let's do some follow-up analysis. I'm going to toggle back to analyses and I'll, go, uh, I'll use exploration and get some descriptive statistics for uh, these variables and the membership variable. As you see in the corner, for the membership we only can move uh, nominal variable. So if I click on membership, the original variable which was created in uh, latent class analysis, it, it will not move, you see. But So that's why I created the member variable, which actually is basically the same as membership. So I move it to member. And now for each of the items, I have statistics uh, of each item across the four classes. For example, for item one, for uh, class one, uh, the mean score, uh, let's say the mean score of uh, people in class one is 4.59 out of five, whereas the mean score for uh, class two is 3.58. This is just for class one, then class two and class three and class four. What you can do is basically to really quickly move everything to an Excel sheet, so let's do that and create some very useful statistics, uh, a useful um, 
uh, graphics. Let me stop the video for a while and create one for you. Then I'll get back to you soon. Okay, so I cleaned that part of the data that was not uh, going to be used in creating the graphs. Uh, so I'm going to only use the mean statistics of the items across the four uh, classes. How do you do this? Well, this is a v very useful uh, way of doing it, in my opinion. You go to insert and, for example, you can either choose this type of graph, which is insert line or area chart, or we can choose this uh, option here, which is a scatter plot. So I'm going to choose this for the time being. I will choose this type of scatter plots with straight lines and markers. And as you see, this is how it looks like. And if you're interested to change the colors, you can always do that through this menu. For example, this one seems to be more interesting. You can uh, put a title there. If you're not interested to include a title, you can just remove the title. And here is how it looks like. So we've got series one, or oh, that's uh, class one, class two, three, and four. This is how um, the uh, the difficulty or the mean values of the items across the three cluster, the four clusters, uh, change across the t the items. Now I go back to Jamovi and uh, I continue looking at the statistics here. The other thing that you could do with the membership and the items is to look into, for example, the skewness, kurtosis, or anything else that, that might be uh, important and, in, and interesting to you. But uh, what I would like to add here is the plots. The box plots, um, in, in my view, are pretty useful in this case. So I'm going to choose box plot, violin, data, and mean, all of these statistics, uh, all of these uh, options. So uh, the numbers and, and statistics will be converted into uh, this nice graph. For item one, this is how the data is distributed across the four classes that we generated in our latent class cluster analysis. In the same way, this is for item two and item three. For example, the mean for, let's just look at something that's more clear, the mean for uh, item four in class one is here whereas it goes down to this number which is around three something and slightly uh, in the, it slightly changes as you as you move from cluster two to cluster three I think the, the uh, differences might be quite small but there is definitely a significant dip from cluster three to cluster four in the mean of item 4. Now we can do some postdoc analysis. For example, we can do an ANOVA test, um, maybe a one-way ANOVA, uh, to see if there is any significant difference across uh, those four groups. So uh, my dependent variables are those items. So I choose all and move it to the dependent variable. And my um, grouping variable is member. So you can wait for the ANOVA test. This is the Welsh test. We can also get the um, Fisher's test, which assumes the equality of variances. Of course, you need to look into the homogeneity and normality test as well if you're interested to uh, you know, check all the assumptions of ANOVA. That's something that I have discussed in another video. So what I just want to say in this video is uh, you know, all of these variables, as you can see, are uh, they have statistically significant differences across the four groups. So now you can do a postdoc analysis to see where those differences are by doing some pairwise comparisons. Actually, you can uh, watch my previous videos to, uh, f uh, you know, to see how uh, that kind of analysis can be done. So um, I would like to go back to the latent class cluster analysis and just wrap it up by saying that latent class cluster analysis is a very useful technique in uh, in which you can use qualitative categorical and nominal data actually um, in Jamovi unfortunately so far we cannot use uh, ca um, continuous data but I think in the future they may add it to it uh, it's very useful in the sense that you can combine nominal and categorical data in one in one analysis 
And that's something that differentiates latent class cluster analysis from other types of clustering techniques. In addition, uh, it's non-parametric in the sense that you don't need to uh, look into the normality of the data or anything like that. Um, so I think that's more or less everything about latent class cluster analysis in Jamovi. I hope you find this video useful. And if you liked it, please give it a like, have a good day, and stay tuned in for more videos about Jamovi and other software packages. Goodbye.